Georgia claims to have uncovered plot to violently overthrow government. Let me just share it again. I lost the I lost the tab here. This is from Politico. Um, so obviously Politico is uh, characterizing this story as merely an allegation by the Georgian government um, mm. because the Georgian government is once again back on the enemies list. Uh, that's because they passed this uh, this foreign transparency law, which you know we we covered extensively here on Active Measures. But uh, a, a plot to violently overthrow the government has been reported in Politico. Uh, a plot to assassinate top officials in Georgia's ruling party has been uncovered. The country's security services alleged on Wednesday amid growing concerns over the future of democracy in the South Caucasus nation. Once again, democracy is at stake here, people. Uh, in a mm. statement posted on Facebook, the security services of Georgia said that it had opened an investigation into the preparation of a terrorist attack and conspiracy to overthrow the government of the state. The plan, it claimed, had been hatched by former government officials, likely referring to those serving under the previous government. Um, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here because several Georgians have, who had traveled to Ukraine to fight with the armed forces and defend the country against Russia's invasion have been detained for questioning as part of the investigation local media reported. Mamuka Mamlushvili, the uh, commander of the Georgian Legion fighting in Ukraine, told independent Russian outlet The Insider on Sunday that around 300 people from his unit have been added to the wanted list in their home country. So Georgian Legion, as maybe you guys know from my reporting on NAFO, um, is the primary recipient. In fact, NAFO was launched uh, by a man by the name of Camille Dushevsky uh, for the explicit purpose of raising money for the Georgian Legion, as he told Michael Weiss in an interview, Michael Weiss, the uh, anti-Russia think tanker, um, because he, be, lunatic, because he believed that the Georgian Legion's reputation as criminals and mercenaries would preclude them from receiving Western weapons. So that's yeah. uh, in that's in that interview. I, I should have pulled that up, actually. I should have prepared that. But we have also, you know, this is very important. This is an interview with Mamuka Mamalashvili from yes. April 2022, where uh, he admits to carrying out war crimes, that basically it's the policy of the Georgian Legion to engage in war crimes and basically violations of the Geneva Convention, uh, the execution of prisoners of war. Yes, we tie their hands and feet sometimes. I speak for the Georgian Legion. We will never take Russians... Russian, Russian soldiers prisoner. Not a single one of them will be taken prisoner. Um, mm. And I've yeah. compiled, I'm going to play this one with audio uh, where we lost uh, the tab again. Hold on. So they, what, Mo Sunday, Saturday, when the, they caught those two spies? Hmm. Caught two Russian spies blew a checkpoint, shot their car up, Black bagged them. Two of our dudes were downstairs having a cigarette. Fucking slit their throats in the basement of the fucking building. We don't even know if they were actually spies or people who just fucking ran a checkpoint. You know what I mean? We slid his fucking Achilles and we made him swim across the river to see if he could swim without Achilles' tendons. I don't know. He was about 18. I don't give a fuck. We made a lesson to him. We fucking cut his Achilles' heels and we made him swim swim across the Severodonetsk River, and he drowned. Or he was shot. We were all taking kind of like practice shots at him to see how well our shot was as he swam without Achilles heels. I don't know. Maybe our guys from these shit, Siberian shitholes, they can't swim well. Either way, he's dead. I am not stupid enough to incriminate myself of course those fucking Georgian Legion guys did that stuff because they're fucking Georgians and they're retards. You know where the fuck he was from? He was from somewhere in Central Asia. Central Asia or S Central Russia. We've been told to take no prisoners. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just like basically like there was <clears throat> the first um, speaker was was a, for a U.S. Merc who fought with the Georgian Legion who talked about how these, these there was 
two people in a car who like blew a checkpoint that was being run by Georgian Legion in Ukraine. Um, so they just assumed they were spies, like shot up their car, black bagged them, which is to say put black bags over their heads, took them down to a nearby basement and slit their throats without even knowing who they were. Um, and then the next speaker was this individual called Benjamin Velcro, who's had a lot of very interesting things to say about his experiences fighting in, in the proxy war and has um, made himself an enemy of Georgian Legion for what he said. But I mean, he talks about how they captured a 18 year old Russian soldier and sliced his Achilles tendons and threw him into a freezing river to see if he would could swim without his Achilles tendons. Um, and while he was flailing in the water, they took pot shots at him until he died. Um, you know, really charming people and their leaders are like visiting London and Washington DC and appearing with um, leaders in these smiley photo ops. Um, it's really terrifying. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, the, the leader, Mam uh, Mam uh, Mamaluk, uh, like that he, um, he uh, has like boasted to the media of, of like just op like openly boasted about committing war crimes and like whether it's true or not, we don't know, but like running over uh, Russian soldiers in his, in his BMW, which happens to be pink. Um, by the way, um, for whatever reason. So, I mean, this is what I have now. His sister is a, Mamuka's sister is a pro EU parliamentarian in, in Georgia. Of, but, but, but of course, of course, hand in hand, but gland in gland. But like the, what, what Alex has just brought up now, like this was an absolutely horrendous video that traveled very, this is the one time that the Western media has commented on this. It is a Georgian Legion unit uh, executing an injured and bound, I think, um, Russian prisoner of war who's like next to a pile of, of, of bodies of the VDV, which is the Russian paratroopers. Um, they caught these guys a few miles away from Bucha or Buka, um, and then just like it looks like they just executed them like in cold blood. And they're all like like smiling and cheering on camera and having like a great time of it. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, um, again, and, and like, the, you know, there's there's, a, there's, a, there's that great there's there's a there's like a there's like a famous and um, uh, sketch from Mi the Mitchell and, and, and Webb look, which is this, these two British comedians, where there are like these two Nazis um, dressed up in full Nazi gear and one of them turns to the other and said, says like, do you think we're the baddies? That's a wonderful video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I just want to point out this early reporting I did on Mamuka um, for the Grey Zone yeah. uh, from Superb. 2022. Uh, Ahead of showing, the curve, as ever. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, U.S. lawmakers welcome notorious Georgian warlord now boasting of war crimes in Ukraine. And you have here Mamuka meeting with Representative Elliot Engel, then the uh, chair of the House Foreign Relations Committee. And in my section, a warlord goes to Washington as this reporter recently documented for the Gray Zone, photos public, uh, posted by Mamalushvili on his Facebook page showed the Georgian hard man inside the U.S. Capitol rubbing elbows with some of the top figures of the House Foreign Relations community, uh, Committee. His hosts include Rep. Elliot Engel, Rep. Carolyn Maroney, Maloney, uh, former Representative Sander Levine, uh, Representative Andre Carson, Representative Doug Lamborn, and former Representative Dana Robacher. Additional photos show him visiting Senate offices, including that of Senator Dianne Feinstein, the former chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, and Kristen Gillibrand, who sits on the Intelligence Committee as well as the, as well as the Armed Services Committee. Contacted by phone by this reporter, the offices of Senators Feinstein and Gillibrand have declined to comment on their hosting of the Georgian Warlord. So this guy seems to be pretty well connected. I think your uh, words ring true as ever. We're in the wrong game. We should... <laughs> Because, yeah. you know, I've also heard, you know, from uh, whistleblowers that were associated with the Georgian Legion that they don't tend to go close to the front lines. They tend to stay very far away. Oh, yeah. um, well, I and, mean, Lindsay, 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 uh, Lindsay Snell, who I mentioned earlier, like she um, uh, has a bigger set of balls on her than most male journalists that I know yeah. and traveled around the front line in Ukraine and um, wanted a meeting with the Georgian Legion um, and they explicitly didn't allow her to have a Ukrainian handler or fixer because they don't yeah. trust the Ukrainians. 
Yeah. So, like, she had to go on her own to meet with these people who boast about, like, brutally torturing and murdering um, Russian soldiers who can't fight back. Um, like, yeah, like, the, um, I, I, and it's important to bear in mind as well, these are exactly the people who are constantly banging the drum for, like, more support and more um, uh, uh, weapons and money for Ukraine and who are not going to be very happy when it stops flowing, um, who might they direct their violence against when it becomes no longer tenable for them to be in Ukraine? Yeah. Do you think? And you have uh, from the Georgian Legion just two days ago now, a tweet. Mm -hmm. If you are supposedly ally of Ukraine and are spreading rumor campaigns against the Georgian Legion, be prepared to be called out when our patience runs out. What are they talking about here? Well, it seems that there's going to be some information coming out about the Georgian Legion from disgruntled former members um, mm. accusing Mamuka of staging being poisoned. He was recently poisoned. Um, and there are people that are saying, you know, people claiming to be former members of the Georgian Legion uh, who are saying that that was not true. And there's a lot of money mm. been raised for this group, a lot of money. The entire NAFO operation was dedicated towards sending these guys funds. Uh, and there are people who are saying that one of the commanders, not Mamuka, but a guy by the name of Reshet, uh, this is unconfirmed, but this information seems to be coming out soon, um, is actually in the United States and paid uh, a bribe to avoid conscription into the military. Um, and again, you know, a couple of years ago, I had a whistleblower reach out to me claiming that um, I never got a, a chance to report it, but claiming that uh, these the, the funds were being used for personal gain and not for military purposes as as claimed. So mm. um, maybe maybe they see that the you know war in Ukraine is not uh, going well. So they're you know, they uh, that's why they've been involved in this plot in to overthrow the Georgian government. Something oh, yeah. well, going on. No, go on. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say something to keep an eye on. I I think uh, I think we hit that one pretty good. Um Yeah, I was just gonna say as well that just like I mean as as we're wrapping up here, like I think that the the, the Georgian League, I mean um they have been implicated in prior plots uh which seem very 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 serious um and credible against the georgian government um the, the uh, as we've discussed at length the georgian government has been pushing to adopt uh, this and they now have this foreign agent law that will um uh, compel western funded organ well i mean any, any organization in receipt of foreign funding to disclose their foreign funding and um, which seems like a kind of reasonable requirement. I mean, it's absolutely a law in, in most Western countries. And uh, the EU and US have now like moved to sanction um, the uh, the government, um, Georgian Dream, who they falsely libel as uh, as a as this kind of as Russian puppets. Uh, and yeah, the, like their their the, their leaders have spoken. Um, about how EU officials have warned them, like, well, look at what happened to Robert Fietso. Uh Just putting it out there, you know. Yeah. I, I, and there, yeah, there was I reported at the end of last year for Grey Zone on how there was a. Um, ju we mentioned Oppor, which was this kind of fake Serb youth dissident group that was created by the CIA and NED, um, who helped overthrow, well, was pivotal to the overthrow of Milosevic and then exported their revolutionary template abroad to Georgia, to um, Ukraine, uh, uh, to um, where I think, I think it was um, Lebanon um, and, and, and uh, 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 Uzbekistan. And like they grew into Canvas, which is center for nonviolent uh, applied strategies or some bullshit like that. And they they boast of having trained anti-government activists in Venezuela um, and, and, and other countries and inspired all of these quote-unquote non-violent movements which serve to destabilize governments that the US doesn't like. Um, and they, they two members of Canvas just so happened to be in Georgia yeah. at the end of last year and were summoned for questioning by security services. Um, what do you think they were up to? And, yeah. and I might add that subsequent to this, 
the, gov the, the, the Georgian government announced that there was a plot to overthrow them, and they directly implicated the Georgian lead leadership in this. Now, you've got to bear in mind that the, the Georgian... The, the, the Georgian Legion is heavily wrapped up with Saakashvili, who is this brutal criminal U.S. puppet that, that the U.S. installed in, in the Rose Revolution in 2003. And he would almost immediately, it, it can be certain, if he was sprung from jail, because he's there now for committing very serious crimes, including helping cover up a murder by one of his ministers when he was... Um, uh, when he was when he was uh, the president... Um, yeah, like he would almost instantaneously open a second front with Russia. And I think that like in as we kind of near the end of this nightmare um, in Ukraine, um, what was it all for? Uh, they, they, they are desperate for this to happen. So uh, everyone, particularly in um, geopolitically significant countries like our beloved uh, uh, adopted home country of Serbia, should be on their toes. Because yeah. the the they're, they're not the 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 forces behind the war in Ukraine, which is to say British and American, particularly British intelligence services and all of their assets and puppets and proxies and pets um, in Eastern and Central Europe, they know that failure in Ukraine puts all of their careers and salaries and perhaps even lives in jeopardy, um, and they're not going to give that up without a fight. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.